I'm here with Mark Enman, past president of the SCAA, the Specialty Coffee Association of America, which is the largest governing body for coffee. And, and Mark, is it true that you actually invented coffee and the internet? <laughs> no, no, I do oh. not. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you are sort of a coffee guru amongst coffee gurus. Would that be a fair thing to say? Uh, some may consider that, sure. How big of a problem is mold in coffee? Mold in coffee can be a significant problem. Uh, it's not often talked about in the United States. In Japan and Europe, it's a significant issue that's tested rigorously in the United States. We haven't gotten to that level of enlightenment yet. And so slowly but surely, we're getting there. You're one of the the first person I've heard is a company coming out with this type of dialogue. So it's very interesting to me because I've seen this concern throughout the world. And obviously, it's going to be the next thing in the US that we should be concerned about. It's a significant problem. One of my goals is, is actually to push the US to have, and Canada actually just called North America, mm -hmm. to have regulatory standards in line with the rest of the world. Sure. Be because right now, the stuff that's rejected from Japan will end up in the US. Absolutely. It's the secondary market. It's where the coffee goes if it's rejected from another country. And so this is something that, that bothers people when, when they hear about it. But it, I mean, is this just a little bit of the coffee? Does some of it just get destroyed because it didn't meet the requirements of one country or it's just never shipped there? It goes somewhere else. It goes somewhere else. I mean, a significant portion of natural coffee or commercial based coffee will have coffee that's coming from you know, the rejected coffee from other countries, uh, usually because ochre toxin levels are higher than and are even detectable in those countries. They reject that to the U.S. where it's purchased readily for the commercial market. Well, wow, that's that's pretty scary. Yeah. Can you tell me about what happened in 2008 with Ethiopian coffee? So 2008, I was the acting president of the SCA and was in a meeting when uh, with the Ethiopian uh, ambassador where they, we all got the notification at that point that uh, uh, Ethiopia was banned from importing to Japan and coffee that was on its way on ships were turned away. Now, most Americans who are into coffee know that Ethiopian coffee can be really amazing coffee. It's the birthplace of coffee. It is, and, and some of the very clean Ethiopian coffee that I've had has been amazing. It, mm -hmm. it, it, in my experience, it's been harder to find coffee that meets the standards that I have that are unusual. But, sure. But it's still delicious coffee. Right. So in that year, they had a particular mold problem. Mm -hmm. uh, but those, those, those 1,000 containers or something like that? Yeah. So, so those 1,000 containers of coffee, where did they end up? The United States is where they ended up. Uh, Europe would reject that as well. They have the similar testing standards, so the U.S. and Canada would have received that. Wow, and well, Bulletproof would have rejected that because our testing standards are way in excess of any government standard. Uh, I would think so, yeah. <laughs> awesome. A thousand containers of coffee that Americans drank. That's right. Wow.